kind of ironic making a video about excess importance and starting out the video, whereas normally I would have this hook in the beginning that gets you to want to watch the video that like plants seeds of what you're going to get in this video. But what that does, even by trying to do that with the hook, is it does something called increasing importance. It's making it very important that the beginning of the video does well so that you'll continue to watch the video. And the funny thing is, is you can probably feel at the beginning of some of my videos when I have that intention for the hook to be something that gets you into the video so that you watch the video, probably feel that resistance. Now that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. It's the missing key to so many people manifesting, creating their dream reality. And this is the thing that completely transformed my own life when I learned it. I'd say, if you remember on my YouTube channel when I was making videos on letting go for like a year, <laughs> it was when I was learning about this concept. Not only learning it, but actually applying it and seeing dramatically different results in my life as a reflection and then teaching it and hearing from thousands of people that it completely transformed their own life. And it has to do with this one hidden secret of reality that comes from this Russian quantum physics book that has to do with this idea of excess importance. Anything we give excess meaning to, excess importance to, we separate ourselves from it. Think of this as the balancing forces in our reality. Now, the idea is that there are balanced forces in our reality. Think about it like everything in, our, in nature is balanced. If there's certain, certain temperatures that need to be balanced, there's wind that comes in that moves it around. We've got the four seasons that balance out crops and balance out naturally, just naturally happens on the planet. There are these balancing forces that are just there. And what happens is any time there is this thing called excess importance, we give too much importance to something, we create what is called excess potential, which is this energy that exists in our energetic field that literally repels what we want. This is why you may notice that anytime you want something or you go and you make it very important for something to, to happen a certain way, there's resistance put into the process. The more you want someone to like you, the more resistant your energy is and the more they feel it's inauthentic. That's excess potential. That's excess importance. Now think of it like anytime you treat someone like a celebrity, they treat you like a fan. Anytime you put someone on a pedestal and you give them a halo, they feel that power dynamic difference and they look at you differently. I remember when I first met my tattoo artist, I remember seeing his Instagram work, seeing all the people that he's worked with, all the celebrities he's worked with, and all these things. And I remember, when I met him, I had this ideal image in my mind of him and it literally took me one or two sessions before I just sunk in and was myself. And the funny thing is once I was myself and that pressure was taking off, we connected and it become friends. Become really like where really enjoy working together. And it's funny, I've always, so I've noticed this pattern in myself. I remember the first time I went and did a YouTube collab. I drove all the way to LA and I met this YouTuber and him and I did this video together. When I first met him, I thought it was like, I was just getting out. I still had my nine to five job, I think. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm with this guy that has like 300,000 subs. And at the time I had like 70,000. I, I thought it was so cool. And I was like, I was being, I could tell I was just was messing up my energy. And I could tell that that respect wasn't a two way street. I could tell he like straight up thought I was like this, like uh, what you might call it. I could tell that that respect wasn't there. And him and this person and I ended up even doing a, at this meditation center, we ended up doing this little talk together. And what ended up happening is after this happened, the next time I came back to LA, which is like a month later, the vanity wore off. And when it wore off, what ended up happening is I ended up coming back. And honestly, kind of what happened too is something happened to where I started to see behind the, I started to see things a little bit differently when it came to just uh, certain level of, levels of integrity, I guess you could say. And when that happened, it kind of took off the, it took off the halo effect. 
And then I completely detached. One of those things that happened was I came to this person's house and literally, or this, yeah, and, and literally waited outside for like an hour and a half after like a three and a half hour drive from Vegas. And that got me irritated. And I was like, I felt like, I think my time wasn't respected or whatever. But as this stuff started happening, I started to like, that halo started to come off and I started, it's kind of messed up actually. I don't like the way he's treating me. And then what happened, funny enough, is I completely let go. I completely didn't care whether I had his approval or disapproval anymore. Not that I was seeing him as below me. I just didn't see him on this pedestal anymore. And funny enough, the next time I went there for something, I forget what it was. Maybe I think we collabed on another video or something. Um, I, it was like, it was like the, the, the reverse energy. I could tell he really respected me because I wasn't attached. There was no excess importance. There was no excess meaning. How many times have you had it where maybe you were dating someone and if you put them on a pedestal, they straight up felt that needy energy and it repelled them. But then once you let it go, all of a sudden there's a connection. That happens so often with my old videos where I was talking about like letting go of an ex or someone that you're attached to. Do you know how many comments I get from people when I say, just let them go? Don't let them to go to get them back. Just let them go. Realize you are giving them excess importance. This also comes from uh, breeding scarcity. You are the soul of my life. You are the other half to my soul. You are this person on a pedestal. Everything needs to work out really well or else I won't be happy. But when people realize there's an abundance of people in the world, there's abundance of connections that you can have, they take them off the pedestal and then they let go and they start focusing on themselves. They let go of excess potential, excess importance. All of a sudden they're attractive again. Do you know how many people have let go of an ex and then all of a sudden the ex is calling them back? Why? Because of excess importance is released. Now don't do it to get them back. Don't do it to manipulate reality. That kind of goes against what we're going to be talking about here. But in general, when you let go, everything shifts because you're letting go of importance. Now, the idea, so you're like, okay, so you let go of importance. How do you do that? We're going to be talking about that in a little bit. It's going to completely change the way you go about reality. It did for, for me at least. And a lot of people I've shared in my 21 day challenges and everywhere else I've talked about it. But nonetheless, when you let go of that attachment, you allow things to be as they are. Now think about this. Everything in reality is fundamentally neutral. So we talk about excess importance, excess meaning. There's no meaning built into reality other than the meaning you give it. You could look at that of a rainy day and say, what does a rainy day mean? Is it good? Is it bad? And funny enough, anytime I ask this question on a live call or a live video or something, or in the comments, you will get hundreds of different meanings of what, of what a rainy day means. It's not even just good or bad. It's like, it means gloomy. It means depression. It means excitement. It means dance in the rain. Like it, there's all these different meanings because the person generating the meaning has a different meaning. Now the person, the place, the opportunity, the job, everything is so neutral. What, gra what creates excess importance is when you take it from being neutral and you shift it up to being very important. You give qualities to something that is not there. It imbalances reality. So whatever that is, if it's a person like that, when I was going and meeting the YouTuber and I was putting him on a pedestal, it's not. And some people feed on that energy, by the way. There are people that feed on that, that energy that like, and we'll talk about that in a minute because it has to do with superiority and inferiority, which is all different forms of excess potential. But nonetheless, when you see things as natural, this is, if there's one thing, see things as natural in your reality. It is natural for you to be living your dream life. It is natural for you to be in the ideal reality. Here's the funny thing too. By the time that thing comes here, it will be natural for you or it won't come into your reality. By natural, it's like, it's almost like it's cool, but you're not like, oh, this is so amazing. Oh my God, it's so important. This is so cool. This is good. And normally things like that, they drop back down. It's like the universe or whatever, the balancing forces comes in to balance out the excess, excess potential. So this is really an energetic play. And when we are trying to control reality, we are putting excess importance into reality. Let me show you this, this thing. I, I, I talked about this on Instagram live recently. 
And somebody commented this. This is just proving that this works. I really want you to understand that when you do this, it changes everything. Someone says, yes, I've been feeling lonely for a few months now and I must have been projecting it onto everyone around me. But anyways, two days ago, I decided enough was enough and I was gonna let it all go. And like clockwork, one of the women who I showed interest in and, so, and showed very little interest in me suddenly reached out to me and came to see me at work. It was an intense conversation too, but I didn't feel clingy or like I needed anything. Felt good and I felt free. Thank you, sir. This person was talking about me talk, I was talking about excess potential or excess meaning in an IG live, applied it and it, it changed the whole entire energy dynamic. So anything we give excess importance to, excess meaning to, needs to be balanced out and brought back to neutral. So it's almost like being neutral is being in the state of flow of understanding that the universe can bring you things and you don't have to control it. You don't have to overly think of it and try to manage it to where it needs to go. So let's look at, so first off, importance or excess potential is also what it's called. It has to do with excess meaning. Everything is fundamentally neutral. You give it excess meaning, it creates this imbalance of energy. Balancing forces come into play to neutralize it. And what happens is this is also where people might get what are called dependent relationships. Dependent relationships that people have with other people, with things in their life, with opportunities. But when they're dependent on it, they're making that thing important and they're putting it on a pedestal. And inside their energetic field, they are creating excess potential. We'll talk about guilt in a little bit. Guilt is pure excess potential. And we're going to talk about that and why that creates an energy imbalance where you will only experience more of what's in your field. But dependent relationships are about becoming aware of what your relationship is with yourself and why there is so much meaning given to other people. Meaning given to how you interact with other people even. Now let, look at this. Let me see, let me, let's, so, let's look at a couple other examples of some practical examples for excess meaning that maybe you can relate to. Teenagers may be defiant as a way of compensating for their feelings of insecurity. So they act, teenagers act out of line because they feel insecure, but that's their way of like kind of acting out and expressing it. Shy people can act in an overly overt fashion in order to hide their shyness. My best friend Victor has went through this. And you know what's funny is the more he's owned his shyness, because in person, when you're around him, he is more, he's, his best friends are like, um, the way I am, I'm very extroverted. And then he sometimes would compare himself, be like, I'm not as extroverted as that. I'm supposed to be. When I'm with other people, I'm supposed to be. Funny enough, when he would try to do that, he said he would, it would feel inauthentic for him when he completely let go of it and didn't care anymore. And he would even do things like at the retreats we run where he would just be like, acknowledge that he needed time to himself and he would go like lay down for like 10 or 15 minutes and then come back and be revitalized, but not like, I need to be someone I'm not. He was just kind of accepting. One of the cures to excess potential is accepting and owning who you are and whatever insecurity it is. And here's the other side of the spectrum of shy. Someone that's shy is normally a very good listener. There's nothing wrong with you. Excess importance is when you believe there's something wrong with you and you have to be different in order to get someone else's validation or approval or to seem quote unquote normal. It says people with low self-esteem want to put their best foot forward and often behave in a manner which is effective, which is affected and tense. So imagine somebody that's like on social media and it's like, you know, they're looking perfect and you can just kind of feel that energy. I even catch it in myself sometimes when I go on Instagram. I can tell that like there's this part of me that's like wanting to be perceived a certain way and I'm like, wait, I gotta let that go. And the more I let it go, the more natural I am. And funny enough, a lot of times, the more things do well. It's a funny little thing. One of the reasons I started making more videos on YouTube, because when I was making one video a week, it was very important that that one video a week did well on YouTube excess importance, excess potential. And then in the beginning of the video, like I started this video with the hook, I need this to be really good. I need this to really catch people's attention because it's the one video a week coming out. It would create all this pressure and the balancing forces is it would come off cringy or not as well as it could. What happened is now I started to make more videos on YouTube, three or four videos a week. Guess what happened? Less 
excess meaning, less excess potential. And now it's easy, it's more flowy for me and my energy is much more natural. You probably could feel the energy now compared to the beginning or even other videos. Just in the moment, I'm just sharing, there's not important. If it was really important that you like this video and that you see me a certain way and that this and that that, you would feel that energy. But have you noticed, even think of the archetype as the cool guy. You know, in, in high school, when you think of the person, I really want to ask Jenny out. I hope she says yes so we can go to Sadie's Hawkins dance. Uh, 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 what is she going to say? Hey, Jenny, you want to go out with me? And it's just like this tense energy. And Jenny's just looking at the person that's over there that's leaning with his leather jacket against the, uh, the, the locker with a toothpick in his mouth. I know this is old school. <laughs> but imagine that. And it's like, that's the archetype, right? He's like, I don't care. I don't care if Jenny likes me or not. It's all lame. It's like that sad boy movement. There's like this sad boy movement in uh, society now where it's like, whatever, who cares? But of course they really care. <laughs> That's the funny thing. They say they don't care, but they're like, whatever. <laughs> it's like this apathy energy. But nonetheless, that, think of the energy of someone that's not attached. Okay, go do you, boo-boo. Cool. Yeah, I totally, that's what love is. Love is like, you go into a flower field and there are flowers and you just sit there and you sit there with the flowers and you breathe it in and you feel it and it feels like love. Then what happens if you pick up the flowers and you're like, I'm gonna keep these for myself, dependent relate, these are mine and you take it out, a week later, the flowers are dead. And you're like, well, well I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep them. And it, it's like, that's not love. It's like some form of manipulation. That's some form of, uh, of, of, of attachment. There's a famous quote by Osho. It has to do something like, love, unconditional love is like, there's no attachment at all. There's no condition. And it talks about like somebody picking a flower. So you just smell the flowers, that's love. Picking the flower, that's not love. That's why in relationships, if you really love someone, you'll let them grow into who they're meant to be. But when you try to control them, <gasps> resistance. So. Superiority versus inferiority. So when you think, this can work both ways. One is, I am better than everyone else. That's superiority. And when you are better than everyone else, you will get slapped on the wrist. Biggest example of this I've seen is the Logan Paul situation or the David Dobrik situation back in the day, they're YouTubers, where they're at the very peak of their career, very peak of everything. They were getting so much attention and energy validation, everything. Excess importance, excess meaning. Also, this has to do with something called a pendulum. Maybe I'll make a video on that too. But then what happened is they do something that messes everything up. It's like they sabotage themselves. It also could be balancing forces coming into play to re-neutralize their ego. Ego is kind of like overly identification with ego is superiority. And when you think that you're hot stuff, you will go around, but you will, you will create these dependent relationships and also this inauthentic energy. Inferiority is where you believe you are beneath everyone else. Normally, superiority and inferiority attracts each other. This is where you get the narcissist and the empath. Narcissist, I'm better than everyone else. If you, and then the empath is like, I'm not, I, I need to fix, I'm not good enough, I need to overcompensate, and it creates this kind of relationship. So becoming aware of these is very powerful. Now, the control destroys balance. Everything in reality is fundamentally neutral. There is no built-in meaning. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. That kind of scared me. Excess meaning. But what happened, what did I say that would make her be? I talk about her like it's a her, it's just a voice. But anyways, control destroys balance. Everything is fundamentally neutral. When you're trying to control things, it's going against the grain of the balance of the universe. That's why I see it as natural. It's almost like, not even see it as natural, but here's another quote for you to type down or to type in the comments or something. I'm good either way. You're good if the person calls you back, you're good if they don't call you back. You're good if you get the job or if you don't get the job. There's an abundance in reality. You're good either way. Who is to believe that your ego knows what's best for you? Who's to say that? 
What if there's a larger scope to reality with the divine flowing through and it could bring more abundance and more amazing things to you, but you're literally blocking it out because it's very important that this one thing happens. I remember going in for a job interview. And there was one time I went into work, it was at Nordstrom Rack when I wanted to work there. I went into men's clothes and for an interview and I really wanted it. Guess what? I didn't get it. I let go. Screw it. Wasn't meant to happen. A week later, I get a call from the shoe, the shoe manager and the guy that was the, called me and said, hey, I, I didn't choose you. And I was like, huh? Why did you choose? I really thought I got the job. He passed me on to someone else. And honestly, for 10 years I worked in women's shoes before I got on YouTube. I couldn't imagine myself for 10 years working in men's clothes. Maybe part of me helping women with women's shoes is also why maybe now I have like 70, 80% woman audience. And I find it interesting. The divine maybe had a d different plan than my ego did. But I also let go. Balance forces let go of, then I got the job. It's the same job. I didn't even have to interview for it really. I already interviewed with the other guy. It was, it was crazy. Now here's another uh, form of importance that people may need to neutralize. Love attraction. So when people want to attract love, they're like, okay, I have this list of what I want to attract. I want someone that's this color eyes, this kind of build, this kind of thing for a living. They make at least this much per year. They have all these very important things that are very important for them to attract. It creates excess importance, excess meaning. Now you can be aware of the, here's the thing. Those specific things also are normally very superficial. What kind of energies do you want to bring into your life? And then what you do is you embody those energies. So if you want someone that lives in integrity, you live in integrity. If you want someone that's passionate about what they do in their life, they're passionate and they have a purpose, then live your passion or purpose. Because there's no excess meaning or excess potential there. But everyone that has a list, that's very important, creates excess potential and it exists within the field. Now we're going to go to the cures here in a second. Now, th last thing I'll talk about for a sec is in your energy field, guilt is the energy of excess potential. It's right or wrong. I am wrong. I am flawed. I did something wrong. That's excess potential. And then we go out into the world and we find more and more reasons why we feel that guilt. I was watching an uh, interview with Joe Dispenza yesterday and someone was saying, you know, I find myself at night addicted to sugar sometimes. I'll eat all this sugar and then I'll feel all this guilt like I shouldn't have ate that sugar. So I'll eat sweet snacks before bed and then I'm like... And what Joe said I thought was really smart. He said, maybe you're not addicted to the sugar, maybe you're addicted to the guilt. Maybe you're addicted to the feeling of messing up. I can think of many times in my life where I've had to set boundaries with people or I've had to um, either break something off or stop create boundaries around something, and there was guilt that I felt. But the more I've leaned into it, the more I've decreased that importance, and it's like the more natural it is. It says natural for me to understand my own sense of self-worth. Realizing I'm not bad or guilty because I need to be in my own energy. So the, this is why forgiveness, by the way, is so important and powerful. Forgiveness releases importance. If there's an energy inside your field that says, that says, I have resentment towards this person that betrayed me, for example. I have resentment towards this, even if it's subconscious. You go out into the world, it's in your energetic field. There's increased importance. It's very important that no one betrays you. It's very important that nobody talks behind your back. Well, guess what's going to happen? Balancing forces will guarantee somebody does that. Because there is a charge inside your energetic field. When you let go of the charge and you forgive the person that betrayed you, you let go of that excess importance, that excess meaning, that excess potential. Think of it, it's a magnetic pull of importance. It's almost like you're pulling in people to betray you, pulling in dramatic people into your life because it's very important that they're not in your life. Let go of importance. Now, how do we do this? That's the end of the video. I'm just kidding. Cure. The cure is to this. That'll change everything. One. Acceptance, acceptance. When I was talking about like, almost like owning your flaws, owning the parts of yourself that you think of as flawed, if you accept and you have acceptance, it releases that energy. It releases the belief that there's even something wrong. So acceptance is very powerful in the process. Accepting other people the way they are, not needing them to be different. Letting go, detachment. Letting go really is a choice. People say, well, how do you let go? You believe letting go is hard. Letting go is a choice that you can make from a higher level of awareness of saying, this thing doesn't serve me. 
Also, you can just observe that the more attached you are, the less you get what you want anyways. If you see the pain, the, the reason it's hard to let go is because you believe if you let go, you're not going to get what you want. When in fact, it's the opposite. You let go of excess importance, excess meaning, and you're more likely to get what you want. But you believe you won't, so that's why you, you, you hang on because you believe hanging on is what you need to do to control reality. But when you completely let go, you become free. So make the choice to let it go by seeing that if you let go, you become energetically free. You are no longer carrying excess importance, putting people on a pedestal. Now see it as, remember we were talking about that, see it as natural. By the time I became successful on YouTube and live in like my dream house and, and make the money that I make, when I was, before I was full-time successful on YouTube, I thought it'd be so cool for me to make a lot of money, for me to, if I had all that money, I would buy a Lamborghini and I would do this and I would do that. You know what's funny is by the time you become that person, it's just natural. It's not like this thing on a pedestal, oh my God, I could do this today. It's like, it's a natural flow of passion. You become the person, you see it as natural. So by the time you attract that loving relationship, it's just natural for you because it's who you are. By the time you attract that dream job or you do your passion for a living, it will just feel natural. Having this more neutral perspective, this more balanced perspective. Now, another thing is develop your own level of what is called your own credo. It talks about this in the book of like, if you notice like a whole bunch of teenagers, the one that's the leader of the teenager group is the one who lives by their own credo, has their own integrity, their own rules they live by. How it happens is growing up is we make important things that we didn't receive growing up as a kid. We didn't get validation or approval as a kid. It's very important that we get it now because we're trying to get our needs met. Those were given to us many times through social conditioning, through ancestral generational energy. Becoming aware that that was what was given to you and you don't have to choose it. You can live by your own values, live by your own integrity, your own authenticity, your own vulnerability. And as you do that, you will notice you feel more energetically free and you're living according to your own values. Values is what you dignify as important, but not an importance of like excess meaning. Just what do you value? Choose your own sense of values. I value vulnerability, authenticity, expression. And anytime you catch yourself making something very important, creating excess potential, catch yourself and bring it back to your breath. See it as natural. Realize you're giving something meaning and you're projecting onto the world something that doesn't actually exist. Stop trying to control. Go with the flow. Go with the flow and don't think that your ego has to control everything. Now, if you want to, by the way, learn more about how to actually apply this process, I'm going to be doing that of a 21-day challenge in January of this year on that of activating your highest timeline, a huge part of it is these esoteric concepts to do with parallel reality shifting and understanding the balance forces in, in reality. If you want to join that, go in and click the link below, grab yo spot, join the activate your highest timeline challenge that's gonna be coming up soon. I can't wait for it, you can grab your spot now and now's the best time to join. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Talk to you later.